ABC 13 Eyewitness News Tonight. Now, breaking news. And we begin tonight with breaking news. Multiple people sent to hospitals after someone opened fire into a crowd. Now, we know that at least six people were shot. Two of them were killed. All of this happening at the Haverstock Hills Apartments in Northeast Harris County. Eyewitness News reporter Christine Dombin is live from there right now. Christine? Natasha, investigators tell us that eyewitnesses told them three suspects drove off in a white car. They drove out this way from the Haverstock Hills apartments about four hours ago after that shooting. They say one of the men inside the car actually carried out the shooting. Around 6.30, investigators say the men pulled into the apartment complex. The shooter got out with some kind of rifle and started firing into a group of people. There were about eight to ten people in front of a couple of apartments. Two men have Died from their injuries. Two more were injured and taken to the hospital, along with two women who were also injured in the shooting. Deputies say as many as 18 shots may have been fired here at the apartment complex, which was full of people tonight. Investigators also say they believe the motive was a neighborhood dispute, and at least some of the suspects knew some of the victims. It's a very large crowd of folks trying to uh, get everybody that we as witnesses to the uh, incident get them interviewed and find out exactly what happened. The four victims were taken to different hospitals. Investigators are sorting out their identities and also their conditions, but they say at least some of them are in critical condition. Live on the Northeast side, Christine Dobbin, 13 Eyewitness News. Christine, thanks for that update. And if the name of that location where this happened sounds familiar, the Haverstock Hills Apartments have been the focus of multiple efforts to curb crime, especially gang violence, for nearly the past decade. In 2010, the district attorney sued dozens of suspected to gang members at the complex, saying they were a public nuisance. The lawsuit identified suspected bloods and crips and banned them from the premises. Now that effort was applauded for decreasing crime in the area for several years. The latest murder that we have reported on at that complex happened back in September. Well, it must have been a heart pounding ride for a man caught in the middle of a police chase overnight, holding on for dear life in the bed of his own truck while a thief ran from police. And this was not a short chase. It started all the way in Beaumont and ended at the Southwest Freeway in Bissonette. We were rolling on Transtar cameras as that chase finally came to a stop. Police say the truck's owner spotted his vehicle being stolen and he jumped in the back. From there, he was on the phone with police, giving them his location. The truck reached speeds of over 100 miles an hour for about an hour on I-10. Officers had to approach carefully, knowing the victim was in the back, and they did not want it to end badly. It just wouldn't be a, a good idea because it's unpredictable. What, I mean, once those tire, once they run over the tire strips, it deflates the tires. It's not meant for it to cause an accident. But you can't control what else they're going to hit. The suspect was arrested. The victim was shaken up, but otherwise not physically injured. And so far, no public comments from the families of two cyclists killed in that hit and run crash in Waller County yesterday. Carrie Guillory and Craig Tippett died when they were hit by a truck while riding yesterday. 25 year old Victor Tomei faces a long list of charges. They include murder, an accident involving death, aggravated assault and burglary. Officers say that he ran from that scene and broke into someone's home. The homeowner talked that man into turning himself in and the homeowner says that it appears the suspect was mentally disturbed and authorities say a cypress man accused of attacking his neighbor will face charges once he gets out of the hospital the alleged victim of that attack was a retired houston police officer investigators say that the 58 year old man was working in his yard when his 20 year old neighbor came over wearing a ski mask and holding a machete and started chasing him that retired police officer shot that man in the stomach investigators say the 20 year old will be charged with aggravated assault. Friends and relatives said a final goodbye today to a woman killed in a murder suicide. They gathered at World Harvest Outreach Church in Southeast Houston for the funeral of Sherilyn Gordon Burroughs. She was a transplant surgeon at Methodist Hospital. Colleagues remembered her as a compassionate and caring doctor who always put others first. Relatives said despite the demands of her career, Gordon Burroughs also knew how to have fun. If you were a relative of Sherilyn and you spent enough time with her, you were going to be up to some mischief, something that might maybe get you in trouble, but you were definitely going to have a good time. Fort Bend County investigators say Gordon Burroughs was killed by her husband in their home near Richmond last weekend. She leaves behind a four-year-old daughter.
Well, we have a heartbreaking update to tell you tonight about a local high school girl who was fighting cancer. Ebony Banks has died. On Monday, we told you how Ailey Hastings High School held a graduation ceremony in the hospital for the senior. She was fighting a very rare type of stage four cancer, and one of her last wishes was to speak with Beyonce, and that happened on FaceTime Thursday. Her friends who worked to get Beyonce's attention stayed by her side through the fight. They held a vigil in her honor at Hastings High School tonight. We also have some good news to report about a story you saw here on 13 on Friday night. Calls of support are coming in to a local horse facility that helps children with disabilities. Now we told you that thieves stole two expensive trailers at the Dreamcatcher stables. The group focuses on helping kids interact with the horses. The theft cost them $20,000 and the older the owner actually told us today someone offered them two used trailers. Also other callers have offered to help with fundraising but no arrests have been made yet. Tomorrow's news tonight it appears the Houston Police Department is about to get the credit do for tracking down Tom Brady's stolen Super Bowl jerseys, Police Chief Art Acevedo will accept a commendation from the Massachusetts House of Representatives. We're told the chair of the House is passing through Houston and plans to recognize HPD for the work on the case and service to the community. Crucial information passed along to HPD led to the recovery of the jerseys in Mexico. The journalist accused has not been charged with a crime at this point. We want to get to some breaking news, even more breaking news, this time from North Houston, where a deputy has shot a suspect. That suspect accused of trying to run him over. This is all happening near Airline and Gulf Bank. We know a deputy shot at the suspect. That's coming from police, also from police. That suspect was hit and taken into custody by Houston police not far away. Now, that man is expected to survive. The deputy was not hurt. We do have a crew at this scene getting some more information, and we will bring you a live update update very soon. Next, panic in a nightclub in Cincinnati. Shots fired. In the end, more than a dozen were wounded. New information tonight on the search for the suspects. Plus, we've seen this happen before in Mexico, but this time, dozens of dangerous prisoners managed to crawl to freedom through a tunnel. And the last night of the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. Tonight, we're taking a peek at the lost and found. Wait until you hear what rodeo goers left behind. David? And Tom, things are looking quiet for tomorrow morning's rush hour. Expect to see a bunch of clouds around, maybe some patchy fog out there. Going to be warm and humid to start things off with the temperatures in the low 70s. For the afternoon rush hour, temperatures are going to be in the low 80s and expected to be somewhat breezy tomorrow, kind of like what we had today. Coming up in weather, we'll talk more about a big storm system headed this way for the middle part of the week.